Welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. As you know, on this website, we like to feature American companies that are based here in the United States doing uh, amazing things. And we have three companies from as far away as Chapel Hill, North Carolina, Lake Mary, Florida, uh, and uh, San Francisco. These are really cool videos. These are companies that will change the way you restore old cars and make parts. Take a look. We have Jim Hall, our chief fabricator. You know Jim, he's been on the website many times. This is Gonzalo Martinez. Gonzalo, how are you? Good. And you're from Autodesk. If you've been to this website before, you've seen our 3D printer, and people are amazed uh, that we can make just about any part. You can either copy it or design it, make it from scratch. So, Mr. Martinez, uh, take us through here, because I, this is so far over my head. If I can understand it, then anybody can understand it. Ex explain what we're going to do here. This is close to Star Trek. You know, okay. we're going to try to materialize some of the right. things here. And, uh, you know, I know you have that part from, from, from the car, and we need to du duplicate that part. Right. So we're going to go through the whole process about scanning the part, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to use it. Right. See, what we have here is, that is a Duesenberg Rochester engine from 1922. It's a walking beam engine. It's very, very rare. And this was the piece that was on it. Now, this goes right on here. The trouble with this piece was, it was totally just rotted out. Somebody had put Bondo in. It, it, it would not hold up to the stresses of being under an engine. I mean, it would look okay if it was a display, but it wouldn't work because it was Bondo and filler. And what you do is you're making us an exact copy of this piece, and we're going to go step by step and show you how you do this. So go ahead, take okay. it away. No, you grab the scanner here, and you just, you can see I'm almost placing the scanner on position and check exactly the distance that I want. And it's feel almost like you're spray painting. But instead of spraying, what you're doing is capturing the shape of the par. And look at what's happening, Jay, in the screen. Yeah. Now, if I wanted to reinforce this part, let's say I wanted to put more metal here, yes. I, I could do it, couldn't I? Yes, yes. Right, in okay. fact, that's the magic part yeah. of this, yeah, you know, because a, we, we bring yeah. it into our software. And while we have it digitally, we can yeah. do anything we want with that part itself. Yeah, that's, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. Okay. So we're going to go back here to our software here, out of this, and here's the part. Right there, it is right there. There's the part. So one thing that I noticed, because you're going to have some heat element here happening right. here. So the first thing that I want to do is maybe add some ventilation system to the whole part. So I'm going to go here, and I have some of the geometry already preset here. So you're putting, like, essentially cooling fins exactly. on the outside of the part. Yeah. The same thing, you know, I want to do it to the other side here. Okay. I said uh, unsuppress the part here. I got there. Gotcha. Okay. But there's one magical thing missing here. Okay, now the judge of the Pebble Beach might frown on this, but uh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. You can put just about anything you want oh, in yeah. the part. Oh, yeah, and, and let me show yeah. you what else I'm going to do with this part. Next, let's say you know you want to give a little bit more thickness on that right. plate. And you can see how I'm interacting wow. the value gotcha. to exactly what I want. So we're going to leave it like maybe there and say, okay. So now your part have extensively changed right. on the shape. Once we have the part mm -hmm. already modified in our software, we send the whole part into the Stratasys system here. Right. And as a result, I'm going to show you where we come. Okay, let's oh. get our finished part. This is actually like nine hours later. It takes a while to make this, but <laughs> right. why? Let's open our magic oven. Oh my gosh. And there you go. Obviously, it takes a little bit longer than that, but there's an exact copy of the part. Here it is here. Let's get the original over here. Got it. Look at that. Now, if you went to a machinist and asked them to make this for you, I don't know how much it would cost, but it'd take hours and hours. It would probably $2,500, $3,000, I don't know. Probably, and it, probably, it would take yeah. weeks. It would take weeks to do. Here you design it on the computer. In the same day, you have a replacement part. There's no lost motors anymore. There's no lost pieces that you can't reproduce. And of course, uh, we're just using this for old cars, but the, the applications are amazing. You, you were mentioning that the uh, NASA has something similar for the space program. What was that? Well, if they get a damaged tile on the space shuttle, mm -hmm. in the past they didn't have any way to repair it. Now, at the space station, they can scan it with our Faro scanner. They can then email that file to the Earth with GeoMagic, create a new file for a new tile, and they actually have a milling machine on the space station. Wow. They then mill out a repair part do a spacewalk, repair the space shuttle, wow. safe to bring the space shuttle back. Right, and also, if you're on another planet and you're trying to restore like a Model A, 
<laughs> but you can't get any parts on Earth, you could send the file to here. They would send it, they would make you a water pump, send the file back, and you could make the water pump on Mars and continue to drive your, your, your Model A. So that's pretty, see, I'm thinking of it all as an old car terms, but it, it's pretty uh, amazing technology. This is, you know, so that's old school guys, it's all bridge ports and all that kind of stuff. And I'm always amazed at the number of guys with hair the color of mine that come here and never even heard of this technology and are just astounded by it. So there's nothing you can't make. So thank you very much. That's My pretty, pleasure. pretty amazing. We can, we can do a lot more with this. If you need any car parts, I want you to meet someone who will uh, just be a savior for your business. This is Ping Fu. Ping Fu is, uh, well, she's the CEO and, and you're the, the founder of Geomagic, correct? Yes. Explain exactly what the company is. Well, I founded Geomagic to enable custom manufacturing, one of the kind. I believe that will be the way that manufacturing will go for 21st century. Right. Geomagic software actually sits in between Ferroscanner and Autodesk Inventor Manufacturing Design software. And what we do is we replicate anything in real world that you don't know dimensions and you can't describe what they are. Right. And we do magic. Yeah. Uh, we, we capture them and we transform them into math mathematic formulas where Autodesk software can continue to make them into manufactured parts. See, to those of us that flunked math in school, I'm gonna go with the magic part. And they're just gonna call it magic. I never even try to figure out how the math part works. The key of this technology is the ability to combine handcraftsmanship and the IT technology. I kind of call it IT-enabled cottage industry. Right. Your garage is just the post child for this technology. I wanna show people some of the things. For example, here is a vase or vase, if you're like me. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, see, they made an exact copy. See the painting? See how nicely it's done? Also on the inside. How amazing is that? And it can cut parts so intricate. This is all made, this is not put together, correct? No, this is one piece. This yeah. is one piece. Again, one piece. One piece, yeah. There's no sub-assembly of parts. No sub-assembly of parts. This mask is built scanning my face, and it's so well fitted, it goes on my face without anything else. You see, now if you're But a, it won't fit yeah. Jay's face, no. though. But see, if you're a bank robber, and you want to put a stocking over your head, that doesn't work. Now you can make a mask that will allow you to rob the bank without them even knowing who oh, you Jay's are. Oh, Jay's car. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> but look at this. Make a shock assembly. You can make any prototype part to see if it fits before you make it. And it even squeaks like the real one. Well, Ping, this is just, just amazing. Thank you so much Thank for saving you, our car yeah. hobby. Thanks a lot. We're going to get more women over here. Yeah, woman. That's power. <laughs> that's right. Uh, you know, there's an old saying, you want something done right, do it yourself. A lot of times you get parts, uh, reproduction parts, that are just not quite good enough, or they're just not strong enough, or they're made in a foreign country, and they, you're not sure of the tensile strength, whatever. So what we do it here at the shop is we try to make everything we can. And, and the, probably the greatest tool for that is our uh, Ferro arm here. This is Jeff and David from Ferro. Explain to us exactly how it works, Jeff. Well, this is the eight-foot arm, meaning it has a four-foot reach. Right. It fully articulates in the eight-foot volume. To operate the scanner, we just put it above the part we're going to scan, and then we just brush it right across here. So the key to this is that all this data is accurately taken back into the CAD system. Right. So if you're either reverse engineering or re-engineering mm -hmm. a part, uh, it's going to be accurate and it's going to be done very quickly. And then it fully articulates in any position. So. Yeah. And this is one of four different arms. We've got 10-foot uh, arms that'll do a 10-foot volume right. and a 12-foot arm. So we can take and leapfrog this and scan a whole real-size vehicle instead of just this design attempt. Here's an example. We're building our Merlin-powered uh, 1934 Rolls-Royce. We're putting Weber carburetors on it. There are no intake manifolds for Merlin airplane engines using Weber carburetors. So we designed our own and we made it using the ferrule. We could not have done it without this piece of machinery. That's the amazing thing. Here's part of the intake here. Here it is in plastic and then we make it in metal. This is a Bugatti water inlet that goes on the block of the Bugatti engine. This is aluminum. After 70, 80 years, it corrodes. You're not going to find anymore. I mean, you could go to England and, and, and have one of these machinists make you a part. Maybe it'll fit, maybe it won't. But you can measure it, design it, 
fit it in plastic. When you're sure it's, it, it works, you ensure it's the right size, you then make it in metal, and that's what we've done. Okay. The key to this device is it eliminates any trial and error that you would normally get from using hand tools. It, it's so Star Wars looking. It's just such an amazing piece of technology. And this is really the future. This is the key. You know, with uh, America has to keep coming up with innovative ideas like this just to stay ahead of the competition. Because let's face it, there are other countries that make things cheaper and quicker. And the fact that we can stay ahead of the game using this kind of technology. This is uh, just, just an amazing, amazing piece. And if they want to go to your website, what is it? How do they find out more? www.faro.com. Okay. Now, if you guys, you guys are going to scan my face, is that what you said you wanted? Yeah. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. All right. Let's, <laughs> let's try We'll it. move the car. Done. Obviously, I was not that happy with my face, so we made a few improvements to clean it up, and let's see what we come up with. <laughs> Look at that. That is pretty amazing. <laughs> that is me. Wow. Jay Adonis. You can do anything with this firearm.